Okay, so we have this double integral given to us. We want to turn this into a nested integral. And this is all about figuring out what the range of values is for the domain. All right. So let's draw the domain. Forget about the integrand for the moment. Uh, the part of the disk of radius 1 centered at 0, 1. So here's 0, 1. Here's the disk of radius 1 centered there. Uh, we want the part of that disk that's outside of the unit disk. Okay, so the unit disk looks like this. Yeah, we need to be on the Oh, I'm sorry. Ah. Okay. Um, there we go. Yep, easy fix. Sorry about that. Okay, so. All righty. So, okay, so what, what are we going to do <laughs> about this? So, for any given, hmm. All right, so we'll, we have to figure out what the range of values for theta and what's the range of values for, for R. So theta, let's look at some example thetas. Um, so there's a theta, and that intersects this shape like that. Yeah? Okay. All right, so we want to know what's the smallest value of theta. I claim it's that line. And what's the largest value of theta? which I claim is that defined by that line. So there's your theta 1, and here's your theta 2. Okay, so uh, good news. I claim a little bit of geometry is going to work this out for us. Now, one thing you could do is you could write down the equations of these two curves. They're both circles. You write down the rectangular equations and just compute where they intersect. Right? But there's an easier way to do it, and that is to observe that there is a little triangle that is relevant here, and that is that, that, that. And for three different reasons, all three of those edges have length one. Right? That because the radius of the unit disk is one. That because the radius of this other disk is one. And that because the center of the other disk is at zero one. So all, all three of these are one, which means that this is a, a equilateral triangle. What do they call it? A, um, yeah, equilateral triangle. So this angle here is pi over three, and that makes this angle here. Well, so, this, so this angle here, the, the theta one that we're interested in, pi over six. Is that good? Yeah. Okay, cool. Similar argument, this is five pi over six over here. Yeah. So we have then integral r d r d theta. Theta goes from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. Uh, then r, what does r do uh, between, you know, for a given value of theta, so let's look at a, you know, some fixed value of theta somewhere in that, in that range of values of theta. Look at a particular theta, oops, particular theta. And on that particular theta, well, let's see, uh, r starts at, well, what's the value of r at that point? Well, that point is on this curve. This curve has equation r equals 1. So I need to solve for r in that equation. Easy, it's 1. Okay. What's the value of r on that point? Well, that point's on this curve. This curve has equation, polar equation, r equals 2 sine theta. Now, you, you know, you can check that. You can write down the rectangular equation, work it out. I claim it's 2 sine theta. And it's a good exercise. By the way, it's a good, also a good thing to sort of remember that when you have circles that are tangent to the origin centered on the y-axis, it's going to be something times sine theta. And when you have circles that are tangent to the origin centered on the x-axis, it's going to be something times cosine theta. And this number, I mean, honestly, I just look at, well, what's the maximum value of r? Oh, it's 2? Okay, well, then... Two, it's you, know, you can kind of just make sense out of it. But anyway, so this is two sine theta, and then the integrand you just plug in. Well, whatever it was given, let's see, log of uh, one plus x squared plus y squared. Well, that's one plus r squared. So there you go. Just a question. 
Yeah. All right, let's say you just need a, did that shortcut with the circle, like you put the circle to pull like coordinates. So yeah. what if the, it was like circle that send that one comma one, like the equation just be? Uh, yeah, that's, so uh, you'd have to, I, mm, I would write out the rectangular equation and, and work it out just because it's, you could make sense out of that with geometric intuition, but it's a little risky, and it's, I don't think it's necessarily really worth it. Okay. Yeah. I would just write it out. And I think on an, uh, some old exam, I don't remember when it was. It might have been last term now that I think about it. I think I did give a circle like that. It was centered at 1, 1, and also tangent to the origin. Well, you know, goes through the origin. It was like the radius was square root of 2. And so, it, um, yeah, but if you, you can just work it out and see what that works out to be. Yep. Okay.